Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Big D Podcast. Before we get started this afternoon, I've, I've got an announcement to make. From now on, all my Big D Podcast videos will go on the Spunky Spectrum Sports. Here, I hope people on the autism spectrum can see what I do, and uh, hopefully my uh, YouTube following will grow, and people who have been diagnosed with autism can share similar experiences and their passions for sports. So now, my guest this afternoon is, as usual, my buddy Alex. How we doing, Dylan? I, uh, I'm hyped for you on getting this uh, YouTube channel set up. It's awesome. I, uh, I'm glad to be a part of it, and uh, I uh, hope we have a lot of success, and uh, you have a lot of success with some of your uh, other guests. And uh, as always, I'm glad to be here, and I uh, can't wait to get started. Well, uh, speaking of starting, let's talk about somebody who, is, who has decided to call uh, an end to his Hall of Fame, to, pretend, to his NFL career, Philip Rivers. Yeah, I mean, the man, he's uh, been around for a long time, you know, he's, uh, he's been, you know, it's never seemed like he's been like, I mean, earlier in his career, I guess he was one of the top guys, but he's always, uh, you know, he's just been, you, you talk to players who have played against him, and he's always been a fun player to play against. He, uh, I, I don't know if you saw that J.J. Watt quote where he was, uh, he was calling defensive players out of position just based on blitz reads, and I mean, definitely an, an entertaining player, to say the least, that's for sure. But um, Probably the NFL's best track shocker, even though he never swore during a game. Right. And yeah, no, he's, he's a funny guy. And uh, I think he, he has a lot of respect from his colleagues. That's for sure. And so um, the question most people ask is, is Phil Rivers a Hall of Famer? You know, I mean, if you look at his numbers, he's what top five and in, in passing yards and touchdowns, I believe he's, I mean, he's put up it's it's not a clear cut answer to me. I mean, I think I, I think it's a yes, but it's not. I definitely not a first ballot. Uh, I think he might have to have a little bit of a wait before he gets in, but I think he will eventually find that final Hall of Fame. I think I think he's put up. I know he hasn't. You know he hasn't won anything, but you know that's not wins are like Super Bowls, and you know obviously I'm I, I know Super Bowls aren't everything based on our club our, our team legend, but um. You know, it's that wins are team are team stat, and they're not a quarterback stat. Obviously, it, it, there's a big portion of the quarterback that goes into that. But you know, I, just based on his numbers and his longevity and his success, I think he will end up in the Hall of Fame. I just don't necessarily think it'll be the first couple years of his eligibility. What do you think? Is Philip Rivers a Hall of Famer? It's not a. It's not a yes. It's a definite yes. Yeah. You you top five in passing yards, passing touchdowns. I don't care what era you play, and I know this is more of a pass out the era. Bill Burns is a Hall of Famer, and yeah, you didn't win a Super Bowl. I'm like a Eli and Ben from the old four class, but Burns was definitely better as good, if not probably a little better at his speed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, do you, how how into his uh, eligibility do you think it'll take for him to get there? You don't think it'll be first ballot, do you? Or do you think should be for first ballot? You, you should think, should uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of good players. I mean, I've been waiting for Zach Thomas to get that that call for a very long time. He he keeps getting to the finalist stage, and cough. Uh, he's got better numbers than Urlacher, but um, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, he's – and the nice thing about him was he he really – I mean, to my knowledge, did he have that many career injuries? I don't really remember him missing too much time. Actually, I do remember one injury. Do you remember the 2007 AFC division round when Rivers partially tore his ACL? That's right. Yeah. Like the Colts. Yeah. It was still trash shocking fans. Yeah, yeah. After saying, I'll be back, I'll be back. Right. But I mean, other than that, I feel like he's, he's stayed relatively healthy throughout his career. And I mean, at the quarterback position, when you've been playing for that long. I mean, you, you can't get those top five uh, passing stats without, without being in the league for a while. And, and that's just a testament to, to his ability to, to come, into, uh, come into every season prepared, come in ready to go. 
and play his best football and try and win football games. And, uh, you know, he did that. He, he won a lot of football games. He played a lot of football games, and he uh, put up a lot of stats to do it. So I mean, you, uh, go, you go 15 years without missing a game. It's pretty dang impressive. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's, uh, you know, I mean, the whole stint with the Colts, I mean, they, they had a good year this year. I mean, obviously, uh, at the end of his career, he's going to be known more for his Chargers contributions, but obviously. But, uh, you know, he's just – he's a likable guy. He's a great football player. He's got a lot of kids. <laughs> I Did you see that quote? Now that he's retired, he's going to settle down and start a family. He's got, what, how many kids does he have? Like Nine. Nine? I mean – He's, he's two away from starting 11, so hopefully uh, he's got some beef up there. He might be able to get an offensive line going. But, he's you know. two away from, st- from having the 20, 42 U.S. men's and women's national team. There you go. You know, he's uh, – but, you know, uh, props to him on a great career. You know, he's uh, – I've always, I've never had a problem with the Rivers. He's, you know, being – the Chargers and the Dolphins had never been really, like, super I mean back in the day they were they were a little bit cl- more rivals than they are now but uh and you know with the Colts I we didn't I don't know we didn't get a chance to see that see him in Indianapolis but um you know I, I've always had respect for him I've always enjoyed watching him play obviously I've loved his mic his mic'd up segments and uh all of that so it, it'll be it'll be a shame that uh he won't be uh lacing it up next season but yeah, I think uh, he's he definitely should be proud of his career. He's he, he put in some good work. Is Philip the best of the O four quarterbacks? Hmm. So you got you got Rivers, you got Eli, and um, Big Ben. And Big Ben. I mean, obviously the rings come into play, and, and you know Eli's got two beating Brady to get him. Ben's got one. Based on pure bet or two, you're right. I'm sorry. Based on pure pure talent, I think it's a toss up between Ben and Rivers. I'd probably give Rivers the nod. I just, you know, I mean, based on actual like ability. Now, based on resume, I think, um, yeah, I think Big Ben. You know, he's he, he's had a great career. Obviously, the end of his career has been uh, it's been dropping a little bit, but um, you know, he's. Uh, I think he's better than Eli, and, and it's close with Ben. What do you think? I'd be interested to see who gets in the Hall of Fame first. I mean, because if you look at Big Ben's Super that first one, he first one, I'm CL fans are still wondering whether he's scored. Right. Yeah. It, and then, and if you look at who threw the biggest pass of that. Super Bowl in Detroit, it wasn't even Big Ben. Antoine Randall found Heinz Ward on that wide receiver pass. Yeah, that I mean, he was wide open too. I mean, that was that was definitely a, a a highlight of that game. I sorry, I just <laughs> had someone at the door it threw me off a little bit, but um, yes, uh, you know, it, you're right. I, I'm sorry, that completely threw me off track, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, they, they've all had, uh, good careers, great careers. It, it's been, it's been a pleasure to watch them play. You know, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Ben. A lot of people think he might retire after this season. He almost retired last season, last off season. So uh, I think it's probably, uh, close to the end of the road for him too. So yeah, it will be interesting to see which one of them, uh, makes the hall first. I think all three of them get in the Hall of Fame, but it'll be a fascinating team which one gets in first. Yeah, I'm with there. I'm with you there. But uh, you know, we have. We, speaking of football, we still got some football going on. We uh, want to talk about this last weekend's games really quick. Oh boy! We want to start. Where was Michael Thomas on Sunday? I think he went in Conido. Man, dude, what happened there? I mean, I I it, I was just sitting there watching that game. I'm like, how? I just how 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 is he not getting the ball? Like, I mean, he th- I knew he went his way a couple times, but still, I mean, your season's on the line. You got to get the ball to your best receiver, and and I mean, it's it's got to be. A, I mean, I I was gonna go on about this later uh, a little bit later, but I mean, you know, Drew Brees. 
as much as I've enjoyed watching him play over the years, you know, speaking of retirement, mm. he, uh, he's probably going to be one of the next ones out the door. Cause it's just, it just doesn't look to be there anymore. I mean, the, the arm strength, the accuracy, he made some terrible interceptions. It's, it's, he just seems old. He seems like he's, he's not the Drew Brees that we're used to seeing. And I don't think he wants to, I mean, you saw that long conversation he had with Brady after the game. I mean, I, I don't think he's happy with his performance. And I don't think he's happy with where the level of his game is at right now. Um, so I, I have a feeling he might be one of the next, if not the next quarterback to, to make that same announcement as Rivers. But, um, you know, Props to Brady, props to Tampa. You know, I mean, the the fact that they had what four turnovers in that game and only won by ten. I mean, honestly, I after and they scored on on off most of those turnovers, if if not all of them. I mean, you know, the the thing is though, I mean, you're not going to get those against Aaron Rodgers. So that's a game I'm I'm excited to talk about. And we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, you know, Drew Brees, unfortunate. Michael Thomas. Man's on a on the back of a milk carton after Sunday. Mm. So, as someone who drafted Michael Thomas in the in the first round this year, I mean, Sunday last week was a culmination of a disappointing season. I thought Thomas could have somewhat replicated his 2019 season and and ended with a zippity doo dah. Yeah, not a great way to end a uh, little on a, a a disappointing year. Yeah, and I, I know he was hurt. I mean, yeah, at bum ankle. I think he's got, what, some of an upper body injury, but... Ugh. But like you said last week, everyone's hurt at this time of year. Everyone's banged up. Everyone's feeling it. And you're, when you're playing 16, 17, 18 games at this point, everyone's hurt. You still got to come out on Sunday, do or die football game. You got a ball. And fortunately, it didn't uh, work out that way for Michael Thomas. You could have said that about Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes both getting hurt. Yeah. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, you know, we can move on to that Chiefs-Browns game. A little bit, uh, obviously, um, Patrick Mahomes had a big, had a big uh, influence on, on how that game went. But, I mean, Cleveland still stayed with it. I was, I was, I was saying, I was thinking that game was going to be a little closer than I thought. Obviously, I didn't expect Mahomes to go out, so that's kind of, it kind of wavers it a little bit. But, um you know, it wasn't too bad of a football game. Cleveland had a chance late in that game. And, you know, unfortunately, they, I mean, unfortunately for them, they didn't pull it off. But um, it was definitely a closer game than I think a lot of people expected. When Chad Henney punted on that third down throw, I thought Cleveland was going to win that game. I'm like, this is going to be Browns, Bills in the AFC Championship game. Somebody's coming is about the end. I know. I, you know, I was – I was hyped for Chad Henney, man. You know, I uh, wasn't a fan of him on as the as the quarterback of my team. But uh, you know, I, I wish most of our quarterbacks after they leave success. And uh, it was it was pretty cool seeing him uh, jump into that playoff spot there. And he was looking good up until that interception, which was a horrible, horrible interception. You ever threw him by about ten yards? But, um, you know, he, 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 had, he did what he had to do. I mean, he controlled the game, and the defense finished it off for him. But, you know, it doesn't matter how you win football games in the playoffs, as long as you move on to that next round. As the late Al Davis would say, just win, baby. Just win, baby. I love to see it. So now we get to this weekend's games. And, ooh, I don't remember a better Sunday – a championship Sunday for quarterbacks and this oh. weekend. I mean, 90, 92 and 90, 92, 93 were great with four all the famers. Uh, uh, 2007 with uh, Eli, Fall, Rivers, and Manning was special. And then a few years ago with Rodgers, Matty Ice, Big Ben, and Tom Brady rock, but I don't remember a, sun, a championship Sunday with four quarterbacks playing this well ever. I know. I mean, it's, these, are, these guys are playing their best football of the season right now, it seems like. And, I mean, obviously Patrick Mahomes got banged up last game, so we didn't see a full four quarters from him. But this is, this is an exciting weekend of football. I can't wait for this. I mean, we've got 
obviously you said uh, an Aaron Rodgers Tom Brady matchup I mean how many how many who's going to complain about watching that and then Patrick Mahomes and the new up and coming Josh Allen I mean this is a weekend of football I can't wait for but um let, let's go into it Tampa Tampa Green Bay what what do you want to see in this game who, who do you, who do you got well coming into the playoffs i I pit like Green Bay winning the NFC. I mean, last Saturday, Green Bay looked like the best team in football. Aaron Rodgers looked totally comfortable. Green Bay's running game really surprised me. Jones, Jamal Williams, and A.J. Dillon all taking a pull at the Rams defense. Devontae Adams looking like a – well, Devontae Adams, despite getting a lot of Jalen Ramsey. Alan Lazard making a big touchdown catch. And defensively, I liked how Green Bay didn't really give up any big plays. I mean, yeah, Green Bay's not the Ram defense, but I think Green Bay situationally can get pressure, especially with its edge rushes. The Smiths will be been, been huge the last year plus, and I think against Brady, you need pressure, particularly up the middle. Because Tom's not mm-hmm. going to escape out of the pocket like these young, like these uh, more scrambling quarterbacks. Right. But then on Tampa Bay side, I really liked how the Bucks took advantage of no one's giving the ball away. I mean, the, Tom Brady was not about throwing for 300 plus yards in that game. That was more of an old school Brady just take what the defense gives him. When you win a Fournette, was so big in that game, both as a runner and receiver. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the when you when you when you've got four interceptions in that or, or well, four, four turnovers in that game. I mean, it seemed like it seemed like every time I was looking, it, Brady and the Bucks were starting at midfield or close to it. <laughs> I mean, it's when you, when you give Tom Brady fifty yards to work with, it's it, you're you're just asking to lose the football game. And and you know, here's the thing is is. You know, obviously Drew Brees, fantastic career, but he's at the end of it. Aaron Rodgers, however, I don't see Aaron Rodgers throwing four, intercep- four interceptions or, or, or losing any fumbles. I mean, you got a big task in, in the Green Bay Packers um, offense. And I, I, know, I like I've been saying this whole year, you know, Tom Brady's got the playoff experience. He's got the playoff experience. He's got the playoff experience. You know, you're playing a really good Green Bay team this year. And, uh, you know, going into the playoffs, I too had Green Bay. I had honestly, I, I think Green Bay might win it all this year. I've got Green Bay winning this football game. I think, I think those offensive weapons are too much for that Tampa Bay team. Obviously, t- Tampa Bay's defense did a great job of shutting down New Orleans last week, but it's a different monster. I mean, Michael Thomas isn't Devonte Adams, and Leonard, and uh, uh, you know, as good as Alvin Kamara is, you know, Aaron Jones is good too. And they've got Jamal Williams and A.J. Dillon, who a uh, nice little trifecta back there. So, um, you know, New Orleans didn't have Latavius Murray. So it was all Alvin Kamara. And um, ha- Green Bay having those backfield options and be able to mix it up a little bit, um, plus with, again, Devontae Adams. You know, I think that's an offense that um, might be a little – you know, Tom Brady's going to have to ball. He's, you, know, you know Green Bay's going to be putting up points. You know they're going to be scoring the ball. And obviously Tom Brady knows how to put up points too. But, you know, that Green Bay defense is looking better and better and better. And uh, I, I like Green Bay this week. Uh, do we have a spread for this game? Uh, last check was a Green Bay three and a half. All right. Yeah, ESPN says Green Bay three. But, all right, you know, right around there, I think that's, that's right about it. Maybe a, Maybe a touchdown Green Bay, maybe four points Green Bay. You know, I, I would take Green Bay minus three there. But, uh, you know, I, I'm fully expecting Tampa to uh, to pull out everything. I, I'm expecting a really good football game in this one. I, uh, I'm excited for this one. This is this is a football game that, you know, I, I obviously I don't want Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, it, it's not just that. I, I really do like Green Bay this year. I think they uh, – I, I definitely think they deserve a spot in the Super Bowl, and I think they're going to get there this Sunday. Well, if Green Bay played anything like the Packers did week six, things might look very different because if you remember Aaron Rodgers in that game, he threw for a grand grand total of 160 yards with two picks. Yeah. Uh, I was actually watching the game with with my buddy who's a big Packers fan, 
and uh, he we were we were or not I was watching the uh, the Tampa New Orleans game with my buddy because Green Bay's played both those teams this year. They beat New Orleans, lost to Tampa, so he was rooting for New Orleans in that game. But um, you know, it's it's a completely different ball game. I, I know that they you know they played earlier in the season. They played both teams, but you can only you can only hold that to so much of a standard because. When when the playoffs start, you got a you're a game away from the Super Bowl. None of that matters. You got 60 minutes to play your best football, and um, I'm excited to see what these two teams have. And plus, you had a little snow, a little cold. I mean, it's perfect Lambo weather, if you ask me. Yeah. Hey, the one thing though, Brady. You know, although he's a Tampa Bay quarterback, that man knows how to play in the cold. So uh, I don't think that'll be a too too big of a problem for him. But uh, you know, we'll see. And uh, in case you're wondering, I don't like the Packers this weekend. I love Green Bay. Playing at home, this is Aaron Rodgers' first home NFC championship yeah. game. He's played on the road for his previous fourth. About time Aaron Rodgers gets in, gets to a Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and do it through Green Bay. I want to see a Lambo leap from Aaron Rodgers this weekend. Lamb, Aaron Rodgers is Devontae Lamb. Uh, De, oh, I must call him Devontae Lamb. Devontae Adams, Lamb Elite for Super Bowl. There you go. You know, I, I, I feel good at Nostradamus here. We're going to see that on Sunday. I'm ready for it. So, one more game, though. Yep. So now we've got the old quarterbacks out of the way. So, who wins the battle of young quarterbacks in Kansas City? And Josh Allen and the Bills taking on. Mr. Mahomes. Yeah, man. So, obviously, the storyline this week is Patrick Mahomes. You know, he got that concussion last week. He's, um, but he practiced full yesterday. He's got, he's got some full practices in. It looks like he's ready to go. They're saying – everyone's saying he's looking great. He's looking like the Patrick Mahomes that we're used to seeing. So, whether that's a smoke screen or whether that's, I mean, the, the truth, we got Patrick Mahomes playing football today or on Sunday. He's not missing this game. There's not a chance. He's going to be on that field. So, you know, I've liked Buffalo this year, not literally, but like they're I mean, I I've I've respected their game and I've respected their talent. They got a big they got a big uh uh, uh task in them with uh with Kansas City though. You know, it's you know, Patrick Mahomes get, makes plays. He gets things done. They've got the playmakers. They've got everything they need to win this game and go to the Super Bowl. They did it last year, and I think they'll do it again. I mean, I, I, I don't – I think a lot of people still might see Kansas City running away with this game. I don't know if that will be the case. I think, I think Buffalo is a good enough football team to where that they can, they can keep this a, fo- a, a good football game. But at the end of the day, I mean – I just think there's too much talent on that Kansas City offense. And, um, you know, Travis Kelsey, he's the best tight end in football. He's been the best tight end in football for a long time. And the man's practically a wide receiver. I mean, he's, he's, he's better than most receivers on most football teams. And he's not, he doesn't even play the position. He's such a matchup uh, just monster. It's so hard to cover him. It's so hard to decide who do you put on that guy. And who, who are you taking that guy off of uh, to put on him? You know, it's just he, – he's, he's a force that – very similar to Gronk in, in the New England days and their prime. You know, it's just it's, – it's, it's, a, it's a guy you know you need your best player on because if, if you don't – but then you leave Tyreek Hill in the white. You know, this, this football team has so much talent. It's, I, I really just – as much as I think Buffalo has, has uh, impressed me this year – I just – Kansas City's too good, in my opinion. Uh, well, in this game, we've got another Week 6 matchup, and you won't believe this. Kansas City ran the ball for 245 yards in that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's – sometimes you you, you got to do what you got to do to win, but – We'll see. I mean, what do you think they're going to be doing that again? I know, I know, uh, Evans Blair's yeah. banged up this week. This, I mean, yeah. everyone's banged up, but he's questionable to play. I don't, I don't think can sit. You, I don't think Andy Reid's throwing the running the ball for two hundred forty-five yards. I mean, this is not a game with running backs. This is a game for the quarterbacks. You've got Patton Mahomes and Josh Allen. Yeah. Do I expect Patton Mahomes to play? Yes. 
Would I be shocked if Chad Henney is under center? Yes. Yes. If Chad Henney, if Chad Henney starts, do the Chiefs stand a chance? No. No. And yeah, coming into the playoffs, I thought Buffalo was going to win in Arrowhead. Yeah. But uh, the last couple, but Buffalo showed me something the last couple of weeks. It's Josh Allen robust, not just running the ball, but throwing the ball. I mean, uh, did, I'm not even – Buffalo did not run the ball in the first quarter once last week. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know what happens if you don't run the ball? Defenses know what you're doing. Yeah. I don't care how good the other, the other team's quarterback is. If, if the Chiefs know, hey, Josh Allen's not throwing the ball and not running the ball, we can pin our wheels back and – Take charge. Plus, Buffalo doesn't have a great pass rush, and I feel like Mahomes even – and, yeah, Mahomes concussion-wise should, may or may not be fine, but I'm more worried about the toe than the concussion. Right. If Mahomes gets a clean pocket and can find Travis Kelsey, Cheetah, Dale Williams, Nico Hardman, uh, and his receivers – I'm not sure Buffalo can win that, but yeah, we know how good Stephon Diggs has been for Josh Allen. But the Chiefs have been in this spot so many times. Andy Reid's the only coach to have to be to have three straight conference championship games at home, and he did it twice: once in Philly and now in Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely uh, Andy Reid is is. I mean, he's an offensive mastermind. I mean, he, he, he's a genius when it comes to, to the offensive side of the football. And, you know, he's just a head coach in general. <clears throat> just a head coach in general. I mean, that stat alone tells you how, how great of a coach he is. You know, the one thing that's been interesting for me with Buffalo is that, I mean, you look at the last couple of games of the season, 34-24, or the regular season, 34-24 against the 49ers, 26-15, with Pittsburgh, 48-19 against Denver, 38-9 against New England, 56-26, obviously, against New England. Then you look – or against Miami. Miami. Yeah. Then you look in the playoffs, three-point win over Indianapolis. You know, they, they only held Baltimore to three points, 17-3, to three, but they still only put up 17 points. You know, it, it, it's, it was in, it's in, just interesting to, me to see how, how many points they put up at the end of the regular season where they really – I mean, five-game win streak then the season uh, – they look like they score 35, 40 plus points in every game. Then all of a sudden they come to the playoffs. They got a three point win over Indianapolis, uh, and then only 17 points against Baltimore. It seems like they're they're and seven of those could be think could be a thanks to the pick six. Exactly. So you know it's it's interesting to see how their offensive. Uh, production has kind of dipped when the playoffs has started. I don't know if it's because Buffalo fans don't know what the playoffs winning playoff games look like, so they, they say, oh, well, we don't know how to do this. We'll, do, we'll find a way to do it. But, you know, you ain't going to beat Kansas City putting up 17 or 27 points. There's no way. Maybe if they put up a 56 or like they did on us, then you're talking. But, you know, that Kansas City team scores points. And Unfortunately, they didn't score very many points last week. I had a, I had a four-game parlay where uh, I picked all three of the other games right, but I picked the over in the in the Kansas City uh, Cleveland game. And uh, uh, now you're thinking I should have. Now you think I should have picked the Chiefs money line. Money line. Should have. I know. But how much would you have uh, made then? Uh, I would have been like 150 on a ten dollar bet. Nothing crazy, but because I, I mean, I, I the I picked spread, and most of those games were were not they were all like minus 100 or plus 100 but you know you gotta you gotta be able to score against that Kansas City team because they they know how to score and they ain't winning that game with 17 points I don't think they're winning that game with 27 points they uh they gotta get that ball in the end zone they gotta score some points because you know Kansas City well and uh it'll be interesting to see if they can do that and it'll be interesting to see how many doinks there'll be because I think Justin Tucker is still doink in field goals and ultra ball yeah, you know, all I have to say about that is Jason Sanders got robbed for the <laughs> Pro Bowl. I mean, no comment. I'm going to leave that one be. But Jason Sanders wouldn't have joined those field goals. No, he would not have. But I think he made, I think he made all pro first team. I think Jason Sanders did. 
Somebody explained that how Sanders didn't make the Pro Bowl but yet made first, first, second, whatever team. Also, I know that we're not talking about this and this is biased or whatever, but my man Xavier Howard got robbed. Got robbed. Aaron Donald, Defense Player of the Year. That's well, not that's not the real vote. We'll see. Yeah, but any vote, any vote. Xavier and Howard should be winning that on every ESPN article, any everything. I, I double digit interceptions. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but you know, it is what it is. Go fit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now our last discussion is. Do you remember the uh, 90s show, Where in the World is Calm in San Diego? Yep. Well, the, my question is, where in the world will Deshaun Watson play in 2021? That's the question, isn't it? You know, obviously the talks have been Miami prim- primarily. You know, he's got a no-trade clause, so that's the interesting thing. Is He's pretty much in control of his destiny, but he doesn't want to be in Houston. Mm. And I think everyone knows that. Obviously, I think Miami is probably one of the front runners for him. Um, uh, uh, we've heard some some talks about the Jets. Would he want to go to the Jets? I mean, would he rather be in in, in New York with a, a brand new head coach? I mean, he's not going to have to work with Adam Gaze, or versus Houston, where I think the bridges have kind of been burned. But I think an interesting I think an interesting spot for him that I haven't heard many people talk about is what about Indianapolis? They have a head coach vacancy. Uh, the Texans on the Texans on train the Sean Watson will finish. Yeah. The that, that would be like that would be like the Colts train John Elway to the Patriots in '83 when both of them won the AFC East. That yeah, that's I not guess, happening. I guess so both right. might have to give up. Quinn and Nelson, five first rounders, and maybe a maybe a future Super Bowl, whatever. But. That's the story for another day. Yeah, well, where do you think? Nelson and Darius Leonard. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I guess I, I guess the division thing slipped my mind, but hmm. all right. Well, where do you think he's going to? Well, one spot you have a name that is Santa Clara. I think the 49ers are Deshaun Watson away from being a the NMC front runner for next year's Super Bowl because last year San Francisco dealt with more injuries than almost any team I could remember. And that what and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was not immune to injuries. Right. Seems like he's been hurt a lot lately. Not even some of the 40 hours, but that got a big time injury in New England. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Jimmy G's time Santa Clara's over. The 40 hours don't need seven or eight draft picks this year and next year. The, San Francisco needs to cash in with these guys still relatively young and inexpensive. Uh, You make a good point, you know. I mean, obviously uh, they they thought they had a gold mine. Bill Belichick was uh, holding on to Jimmy Garoppolo as long as he could. But, uh, you know, uh, San Francisco got him away. And, you know, he's been he's been good. I mean, he hasn't been terrible, but if you have the chance to get to Sean Watson, I mean, you know, I'm in, I'm I'm on the fence just based on what Miami would have to give up for him. So I'm not so sure. I I, I really would want Miami to to to, to give uh, Houston everything that they'd be asking for. But you know, like you said, San Francisco, they're in a different situation. They don't have a quarterback. They just drafted top five the year before. They. Uh, they're like you said. They're they're in a win now mode. They've got they've got some young talent. They've got some talent that they don't have to pay right now. And uh, if if they can put together a package that Houston likes, you know they might have themselves a Deshaun Watson. I'd be happy with that. Put him in the NFC. I, mean, I don't want him anywhere near my division if it's not Miami. Unfortunately, two of the three teams uh, uh, in my division are well, three of the three teams in my division, but two of the other three teams in my division are uh, possibilities, I guess you can say, you know. I, I laughed at the Jets because they had Adam Gase. Well, they don't have that anymore. So, uh, you know, they, they they made a new head coaching hire. From what I've heard about him, a lot of people really like that coaching hire. They think uh, 
Uh, Salah's gonna do a, a lot of good work. Sa- 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 Robert, Robert Salah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about him, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I definitely don't want Deshaun Watson going to New York or New England, either, yeah, any of them. But um, you know, I'd be I'd be fine with him going to San Francisco. I think that'd be a good spot for him. Yeah, being a Jags fan, if you could get Deshaun Watson out of the AFC South, I would greatly appreciate. It. Yeah. We've got yeah, we've got one Clemson quarterback coming into the division. We don't need two. Yeah, I feel you on that. What do you think Miami would have to give up in a Deshaun trade? I mean, would Miami, would uh, Houston want a Larry Thompson trade in reverse? I mean, I, I've – all the Dolphins' Twitter accounts I've been following have been – this is the only thing that Dolphins' Twitter has been talking about for the last since, – since this news story started. It's getting very annoying, but every, from, the, from what I'm reading on Twitter and what people are, are – kind of expecting i mean three first round picks maybe two this year one next year or one this year i i mean i don't i'm confident enough in tua to where i'd rather use our draft capital i mean brian chris green and brian floors have worked very hard to put the dolphins in the situation they're in now they they made some great trades to be able to get um Houston's first first round pick this year, which ended up being a top three pick, which I don't even think they expected the top three pick out of that trade. Plus um, the extra uh, the extra first from last year. I mean, the, Chris Greer has done a lot of work to put the Dolphins in in the situation they are now with draft picks, cap space, and players on his football team. And I don't think he's going to want to get rid of all of that for a quarterback because, we, I mean, he. Every, everyone in the Miami Dolphins organization is saying that Tua is the guy. He's the starter next year. He's the guy. So why sacrifice him and all of our assets for Deshaun Watson, as great as he is, but you, you're putting him and we don't – we wouldn't – because he's got a massive contract. So how are you going to surround him with talent enough to win football games is my question. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. I mean, if you look at Houston's roster, I mean, other than DeAndre Hopkins last few years, could you name anybody off the Texan roster? Yeah, like, and what do they do with it? And plus, you actually would have a competent head coach. I mean – yeah, but I mean, Houston wasn't the pinnacle of the NFL for the last couple of years. You know, Deshaun Watson, he's kind of been wasting his career in, in Houston. He's, he doesn't have the talent. He's had a horrible head coach and, and, and general manager, but they, I mean, they haven't really done much. I mean, they've, they've got JJ Watt on the defensive side when he's, when he's healthy, but you know, obviously he'd be in a better situation in Miami. I just, I, I just keep thinking – all everything that keeps running through my head is Tua, Devontae Smith, and Najee Harris. That's just – that's everything that's been running in my head. But I mean, Najee Harris and Devontae Smith both got put on Miami, Miami uh, sides of the Senior Bowl, where Miami co- – so Najee Smith and Devontae Smith are going to be spending a week with uh, Brian Flores and company. I mean, it just seems like it's in the cards to get this Alabama trio together. And – you know, Deshaun Watson is a great quarterback. And if Miami makes the trade, obviously I'm going to be happy. We've got a, a top five quarterback on our team. Uh, but I, I, I'm just – I'm confident in in the route that Chris Geary and Brian Flores have been taking. And I, and I kind of – I just – I kind of want to see it come to fruition. So, um, you know, I, I, I think they're going to ask for – maybe two uh, and three first round picks and maybe get a fourth round back from them or something like that. But I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, if it happens, I'm going to be happy. And if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be happy. I, I'm really on the fence here. Well, it's funny because if you look at the top five quarterbacks in football this year, four of them are playing on championship Sunday. And the one who is it is. Deshaun Watson. Ding, ding. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I maybe, I, I don't know, man. I, I, trading the farm for one player always scares me. It seems like whenever, whenever you send a heap load of picks for one guy, the team who takes the picks always ends up being the one who benefits the most from it. And I just, I, 
I like the amount of capital we have. I love having the third pick and the 18th pick. It's just, I don't think I'd want to give Houston, first of all, their trade, their pick back because I, I, the, 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 the deal of the century just makes me happy and giving them that pick back would just be a little disappointing. And I, I'm confident to a man, you know, you look at, look what everyone said about Josh Allen his rookie year. I mean, it, it, Josh Allen couldn't hit Charles Clay, who was standing with no one 15 yards away from him in the end zone at the end of the game against Miami. Now all of a sudden, Josh Allen's a game away from the Super Bowl. Every, I, Tua came from Alabama. People love hating on Alabama. He had a lot of hype going into the season. But this is the most unconventional season for a rookie quarterback to come into. I am not doubting Tua. I have all the confidence in the world in him. And... If we trade, if we get, if my, if the Miami Dolphins get rid of Tua Tonga Vailoa, get Deshaun Watson, and hey, make the AFC Championship game, but lose it, and Tua goes on to win a Super Bowl, you Dolphins know, fans will never ever be able to forgive themselves. Gonna, I, I, I don't want that situation to happen. Yeah, you're gonna feel like the Falcon fans when they traded Fall. Yeah. So I, you know, I. I'm leaning on Tua. I, I'm confident in him. And as great as a quarterback Sean Watson is, I just don't think it's worth selling the farm for, to be honest. But if it happens, I'm going to be a happy man, and we've got a top five quarterback. So, you know, it's really a win-win for me at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what Watson does, and maybe the Texans figure out a way of keeping him. Yeah. I mean, it seems like – it seems like it's uh, – a little too too much too late for me just based on the amount of of anger I've seen on the Watson side of things but you never know well thanks for hopping on the podcast and uh we'll talk uh, after championship Sunday we've got a couple more so it's before the Super Bowl so uh, get your rest get your popcorn and watch these four quarterbacks this weekend all right Dylan thanks for having me again <laughs>